Hey, well, good to see you all. Hope everyone's enjoying EIA or IAA to us Americans. So, um, you know, often I give talks on autonomous vehicles, but today I'm excited to talk to you about something that I will tell you in the last two or three months, we are seeing extreme adoption in this space that we're calling industrial AI. And so I want to bring that to life for you because if you were to ask five or seven people, you'd probably get five or seven different definitions of it. So. Um, now, when we think about why physical AI and industrial AI matter to us at NVIDIA, it's because it's a $10 trillion industry. You know, how do we get there? Millions of factories, hundreds of thousands of warehouses. Humanoids are super exciting, but think about the tens of thousands of AMRs and AGVs that are delivering parts in real time to be able to produce the Today, one and a half billion cars and trucks, and with mobility, what I'm super excited for the future is I think we, we see this opportunity growing to even two billion or more. But what is industrial AI? Um, it's more than just digital twins, but that's where this journey got started. Um, and I will bring some of these to life, but it's really throughout the entire automotive life cycle, from upfront up design collaboration, where at our GTC sometime back, GM spoke about how they can have a real-time collaborative design review on a mega wall and make changes in real time, as opposed to every two weeks preparing for a review, making changes, and then coming back to performance digital twins, where we can actually have a virtual wind tunnel, avoid the cost and time of an actual real wind tunnel and do it virtually, to autonomous vehicle simulation. A hundred million simulations and scenarios are gonna be needed to feel good about the safety of an autonomous vehicle, to ultimately, I'll say a little bit about the marketing space, given we are at a mobility conference to follow, to ultimately, I'll spend most of my time talking about factory digital twins, warehouses, and the robots that operate within them. But the real convergence is over the last several years, and I think you've all heard about the successes we've had with BMW and Mercedes and GM and a number of others, building planning digital twins. Sim first, digital first. We're now transforming to operational digital twins, and in those operational digital twins, the infusion of AI inside of them. One I already talked about, the virtual wind tunnel. Imagine not just running a computational fluid dynamic algorithm, but actually visually seeing the outcome of that in a digital twin, and being able to adjust on the fly and have physics AI actually recalculate and try different configurations with very high levels of accuracy. To having an operational digital twin where you're actually testing the full operation, say, of a brownfield change. We want to see the AI for predictive maintenance running alongside a real-time parts planning algorithm, along a real-time route planning al algorithm for the robots, and if the design of the work cell caused the robot to have to navigate a new path, that we retrain the robot to make sure that it can operate in that twin and see it now happening, not just before we do the brownfield review, but actually have real-time operational digital twins monitoring the effectiveness of this in real time. This is the transformation that we're seeing. We're moving from planning digital twins to operational digital twins and AI infused inside of them. Now, it's mobility conference, so I'll pause on industrial AI and come back to it. Um, what we find super exciting is using the same technologies to create, first, a virtual configurator where I can look at every different color and trim package combination. But more than that is, and of course, I hope you saw the Lucid Gravity launch, one of our many, many partners, but I'll use them as an example. Imagine the Gravity just launched. I can say, show me a Lucid Gravity driving on this highway or show me a Lucid Gravity in my driveway. Um, and actually be able to have a real-time experience and see different environmental conditions within which the vehicle's performing. And then ultimately put on an XR experience and be able to sit in a vehicle. I've done this in a Nissan where I can sit in a Nissan and literally experience the vehicle, see different color configurations. In the future, by the way, I can see the autonomous drive in an XR. So I could experience the future of mobility before it's even available for sale. Um, so it's a mobility conference. I had to at least say a few things about mobility. Um, back to industrial AI. 
On the left-hand side, you'll actually see a prompt-driven, I know it's impossible to read, but a prompt-driven reaction where we actually have a consumer typing in, show me the vehicle in blue, show me the vehicle in a shade, and so on and so forth. In the middle, imagine an AI-powered factory co-pilot where you're just asking questions about what is the production volume today? Have we had any hiccups in the line? If so, where? Show me that in, uh, instance in the line. Literally take me to that instance in the line and see it live so I see what happened. On the right-hand side, we have to produce 100 million AV scenarios. Well, what if I could just say, place one ego vehicle in an urban setting with seven non-ego vehicles driving 35 kilometers an hour and do an unprotected left turn and have the simulation scenario written for me as quickly as I just said that. This is exactly what's happening on the right-hand side. So the AI is 100% being infused inside of the creation of the digital twin. And while not a topic of today's talk, Imagine that AV simulation that I said, and now show me all thousand variants of environmental conditions and various different vehicles on the road and road actors and actually have that happen. Um, now, we think about creating these industrial AI and we think of it from two perspectives. The left-hand side is historically where the work has been done, where we use Omniverse, our platform for digital twin creation, to create a virtual version of a, a factory or a warehouse. Um, and we use Cosmos is our world foundation model that does those infinite var variations that I talked about in the AV simulation. And so we combine the ability to create a digital twin with a world foundation model that I can interact with to do transfer and create all the infinite var uh, variations that I need to now directly connecting Vision AI agents into the digital twin. Here our Metropolis platform is, is the key linchpin to making this happen. And as I'll exhibit on the following slides, I'll bring this to life. But now we have a digital twin. Now we want to have camera-based AI operating within that digital twin. So think of the layout planning that I've talked about, simulating every single process in the factory, monitoring the operations, as I said, an AI co-pilot can actually show me where an issue may have arised, industrial inspection or vision inspection or AOI, a variety of different forms, having all of that wired up in an operational digital twin, simulating the performance of the robots and especially the very difficult tasks of a humanoid. Um, and so all of this wired together where we can have it all operating again in a real time. And imagine a command center letting me know when I have an issue. Um, what I really dream about is in the future, we have a deep partnership with ServiceNow, for example, an IT help desk application that has Agentic AI built inside of it. Now imagine I'm not reporting an issue with my laptop, but a real-time alert on the factory floor is triggering something in service now that is actually commissioning a robot or a person to go out to an incident in the factory floor. Um, and so this ability to connect co-pilots, not just inside of all of NVIDIA's platforms, but with our software partners, um, is super exciting. Now there's a very, very difficult task to train this data, especially if we're looking for video data, no longer just labeled image data. So we've created a platform that we call, and by the way, a blueprint is part recipe, part architecture. It's a workflow with which you combine various technologies to do a certain thing. We've built a blueprint to solve the very difficult task of go find me data that fits a certain scenario, bring it back to me that I can use, create infinite variations of it and train the models based on the data. Oftentimes we have, we have data inside our corpus that we don't even know what's available. In the AV case, show me pedestrians carrying an umbrella crossing a road. Show me a mother pushing strollers across a road. In a robotics case, show me a wiring harness and a humanoid install of it um, and be able to bring all that data back to train the models. Um, Metropolis, I mentioned, is our platform that connects hundreds, if not thousands, of cameras at every inspection point in the robots themselves to be able to help us identify how is that digital twin operating in real time. We have 
a platform for simulation of robot development called Isaac and Groot for the development of humanoids that helps us train and test everything from AMRs to AGVs to ARMS and ultimately humanoids all in one platform, connected, of course, together in something that we refer to as mega. So now imagine having to tie together AI agents and robots and a digital twin of a factory, and now I want to simulate the performance of a brownfield change, and I want to see is it going to work before I spend or conversely on the backside, detect a problem and lose hundreds of millions in cost. Let me actually test the performance of that. So a short video where one of our uh, system integration partners, Accenture, brought this to life in real time, by the way, for Keon, where they've used our technologies to be able to hear we're seeing first an actual real view of Keon's warehouse. We now take that real view, implement it into Omniverse, and you can see from the green and red flashing, we're actually sensing every single operation of the digital twin in real time, seeing that the robots will navigate properly, that they will avoid humans who are on the floor, and any other challenging scenario that we want to test for. Again, this is all before I actually commission, in this case, a warehouse, or in another case, a factory. Um, so uh, I'll cut the video short just to give you a sense for it, but I wanted to just give you a taste of the vision. There's a lot of ground to cover in 15 minutes. So, um, but it, we're not starting from nothing. We're already doing digital twins with BMW. The Kion example has been an outstanding use case. Conti is getting great benefit out of their maintenance planning. I talked about AI predictive maintenance. Um, and Rockwell Automation and Foxconn are two other examples where we have already brought this to life. So this isn't just visioning a future world. Yes, we are connecting AI infused to a digital twin in a way that really never has been done before, um, but it's not as if we're starting from nothing. There's real world use cases already out there that we're building upon. So I don't think 40 seconds is enough for a very difficult question, but I could take a simple one. If we have time, we have 30 seconds. We have 30 seconds. First, we have uh, time for a round of applause for this inspiring, <laughs> inspiring presentation for these insights. So we have time for one quick question and a quick answer. Uh, is there a question? They all look so satisfied. I, I think you so. nailed it. Thank We're you very a much. We're win in 15 minutes. Thank you all. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate your time. Norm, thank you.